Hello again. This tutorial is to show how you can have a continue timer which shows up whenever game overs where the user can opt to watch an ad in exchange for continuing the game without losing any progress. And during that countdown, if no input is given, the game over screen shows up. The tutorial focuses only on the countdown feature and not the ad integration per se. But by the end of this tutorial, you'll have something like this. That being said, to the basement we go. Here I have a blank scene and in the hierarchy, right click, go to UI, select text, text mesh pro. This pop-up shows up and click on import. Let's rename the game object to timer text and change its property the way you want it to be. Right click on canvas and select create empty game object. Rename it to timer and make timer text a child of it. Here I have a file named timer circle which is basically a PNG file. We don't want to simply drag and drop the image in our scene. So right click on timer game object, go to UI, select image and rename it to timer image. Drag and drop your sprite or the image file into the source image field. Once you're done setting up how it looks, you'll notice an option named maskable. Keep it checked and change the image type to filled. Now, if I move the fill amount slider, you can see the ring disappearing or basically being masked. Point to note is, it can only have values between 0 and 1. You might have noticed that the ring starts to disappear from the bottom and it might be perfect for your game. But for this tutorial, I want it to start from the top. So click on the fill origin and select the option top. Now if I change the value, it starts from the top and goes from left to right. But I want it to go in opposite directions, so uncheck the clockwise box. Next, right click on canvas, go to UI, select button text mesh pro and rename it to continue button. Duplicate the button, change its properties and rename it to play again button. Here's the list of things we'll be changing using our scripts. First. Change the value of fill amount. Second, change the text of timer text. Third, enable the play again button after the countdown. And fourth, disable the continue button as well as the timer game object. Select timer game object, click on add component and type in the script name. Let's say continue timer and open it. You can get rid of the systems.collections.generic. Add using unityengine.ui and using tmpro. We need reference to few things, first being timer value which is how long will be the countdown. Next timer circle for our circle or ring image. Timer text to change the text according to the countdown value and finally both of our buttons. We also need timer int to store the timer value so that we can change this value later on without changing the original timer value itself along with timer float. Inside start. Timer int is gonna store the value of timer value. Next, we are typecasting timer value as a float and storing it in timer float. Timer text dot text equals to timer value dot to string changes our text from zero to timer value. We enable the continue button and disable the again button. Just like my previous tutorial, I'll be using coroutines in this tutorial as well. So we first create a public method start countdown as well as stop countdown so that we can call them from our buttons or other classes. We'll also create a coroutine named countdown. Crawl way back to the top and declare i enumerator coroutine. Then inside start type in coroutine is equal to countdown. Inside our start countdown method we only need one line and that is start coroutine and pass coroutine as its parameter. And inside a stop countdown method, type in the opposite, that is stop coroutine, coroutine. Next, we disable our continue button, enable our again button and disable the timer game object itself. Inside our countdown coroutine, we run a while loop till timer float is greater than zero. The first thing we do is decrease the value of timer float by time dot delta time. Next, to change the fill amount of our image, we write in timer circle dot fill amount is equal to timer float by timer value. The reason we are doing it this way is because if you remember fill amount can only have amount between 0 and 1. Since timer float is being decreased, 
Dividing it by timer value will give us a value between 0 and 1. For example, if timer value is 5 and initially timer float would be also 5, then dividing them we get 1. At some point, timer float will be 4, so dividing them we get 0 0.8, then 3 and we get 0.6 and so on. Therefore, the value keeps on decreasing from 1 to 0 and that's exactly what we wanted. Next, we check if timer int is greater than timer float which has been typecasted as an integer since we are not interested in the decimals at this step. If it's true, we first change the text of timer text to the value of timer int and then decrement timer int's value by 1. Typing in yield return null, you'll notice the error goes away. Finally, outside the loop, we call a stop countdown method. Ideally, when the game overs, you'll have to call a start countdown method, but since I don't have such scenario right now, I'll simply call the method inside start for the sake of showcasing you its functioning. Also inside countdown coroutine, I'm gonna add the line yield return new wait for seconds with 2 as its parameter which essentially halts the process for 2 seconds before continuing ahead. Just remember, you don't have to add these two lines in your script. After saving the script, set the timer value to 5, drag the game objects to their respective fields and one last thing, select continue, click that plus icon, drag and drop the timer there. From the drop down option that appears next to it, select continue timer and stop countdown. Similarly, this is the place where you click on the plus icon and call the method to play your advertisement. Finally, slap that play button and a timer starts ticking and play again button shows up if no input is given. Ideally, your ad should show up on clicking on the continue button and depending on whether the user watched the ad or not, you either let the user continue the game or display the play again button. But that's something to be covered in some other video. Thanks for watching this tutorial and would like to welcome the new experimenters aka subscribers such as Siddhant Pandav to the channel. If this video helped you, don't forget to press the like button and if you would like to see more such content, please don't forget to subscribe. Till we meet again, peace.